Hey, what's up guys? My name is Ryan Bossery. I'm the owner of Rywire, and I wanted to introduce to you today our B-Series and D-Series engine harnesses. We actually get a lot of calls and uh, questions about how these work and how to order on the website. So what I wanted to do is kind of break it down for you guys today and give you like a clear visual of what all the drop down menus are, as well as the differences between all of our harnesses. So the main differences between our Raycam mil-spec harness and our entry-level budget harness are going to be first and foremost, aside from the color of the tags, but also the wire covering. So you'll notice that the wire covering has an expandable braid with a white tracer on our entry-level budget and a Raycam DR25 heat shrink material on our Raycam mil-spec version harness. So we have the yellow tags and the white tags. Those are big differences. The wire covering is different, as well as the colors. So you'll notice that it's a little bit easier to troubleshoot a wiring harness with um, adding extra features when you have multiple colors. So with the, with the budget harness, you have black, all black wire. It's pinned out like an OBD-1 ECU, a standard OBD-1 ECU. The Raycam mil-spec harness has multicolored wires that very closely match a factory color pattern of let's say like an EG OBD-1 wiring harness. So those are the main differences. The wire color and the wire covering are gonna be your big two. So aside from those main differences, I also wanna mention the fact that the Raycam harness is actually customizable. So some of our customers have different injectors. They may have different distributor, alternator. They may also have different manifold pressure sensors and small things like that. So what we actually offer with the Raycam harness is we offer injector changes. If you have something common like an EV14 injector plug, a Denso plug, we can change that out for you. Also, if you have mix and match between OBD1 and OBD2, we can also change those out for you. Um, just let us know and it's also available on a lot of the drop downs where you can actually select the differences of all the different sensors. So these are customizable, whereas our entry level budgets basically stay the same. And I'll get into it later, but we offer changes with adapters. So if you guys do need these changed, they can be, they just have to be changed with adapter harnesses. So I'll get into that a little bit later. So the next thing I wanna to talk to you guys about is OBD, and that stands for Onboard Diagnostics. But we're not actually talking about diagnostics in this case, we're talking about year ranges. So what I wanna explain is that our OBD-1 harness here is a 92 to 95-ish range harness, where our OBD-2 version harness is a 96 to 2001-ish harness. Now there's no real hard line on where it's drawn. So we have to kind of just call it an ish because the plugs are gonna basically tell us what you have. So let that be the deciding factor here. So first I wanna show you guys the OBD-1 harness. This OBD-1 harness has OBD-1 ECU plugs. These are 92 to 95 ECU plugs and they're common on all OBD-1 ECUs, Hondata uses OBD-1, various chipped ECUs use OBD-1. We choose this because our customers, probably about 95% of them, actually use the OBD-1 ECU. So all of our harnesses, no matter if it's OBD-1 or OBD-2, are fitted with OBD-1 ECU plugs. So I wanted to show you the OBD-1 ECU plugs on the OBD-1 harness. And I also wanted to show you the OBD-1 ECU plugs that are on our OBD-2 harness. You may be asking yourself, why is this harness so long? And why, are the, why is the engine harness connected to the ECU? Well, if you don't have a 96 to 98 Civic, you might not have seen this design before. But we like to keep this design as it's very modular and you can plug this design into any Honda chassis as well as some of our fuse box options that we can get into later. So, so these wiring harnesses are quite long. They're all one piece. So what I wanted to show you guys is we have the OBD-1 ECU plugs. The harness travels all the way down and it goes into the engine. So on the engine side of things, there's some key factors that we need to talk about. 
The first is the distributor plugs. So what I wanted to show you guys was the OBD2 10 pin distributor plug and the OBD1 dual connector distributor plug. So OBD2 has a large all integrated in one 10 pin connector with this little blue terminal seal here. And then the OBD1 is split up into two connectors with this white terminal lock here. The second thing I wanna talk about is the alternator. So we have the OBD1 alternator and the OBD2 alternator. The OBD1 alternator is green, circular, quite large, pretty easy to, to understand. The OBD2 alternator is a little bit smaller. It has a squared off design and um, is a little bit different color green. So understanding those is very important. The third thing that I wanna show you guys is the injectors. So the OBD1 cars use an EV1 style injector. And these are easy to understand because they have a little metal clip on the front for the spring release to unseat them from the injector body. Whereas the OBD2 injector with the little blue inserts has a side clip. So you'd actually squeeze with your two fingers to relieve off the injector body on the OBD2. So the next thing I wanna talk about is the chassis adapters. And what these are, are their vehicle specific harnesses that allow you to plug our harness into various different vehicles. So let's start here at the end of our budget OBD-1 harness. We have the OBD-1 ECU connectors. We have our junction connector, which this allows us to have zero splices within the harness. You don't need to do anything with this plug. This is just where we make all of our splices. Next is gonna be our 20 pin flat connector. We call this one our C101 connection. So this is what really makes our harness a modular design. What we're able to do is to keep these harnesses, the engine harness, all the same. And then you're, you're able to select what kind of a chassis you have. So let's take this one for example. This harness is actually for an 88 to 91 Civic or CRX SI, HF, or EX. So what this harness will do is it will take the C101 connector and it'll plug straight into our engine harness here. The next thing on the harness is going to be these ECU plugs. Now this is a new feature that we've just started on all of our chassis adapters where it allows the user to literally plug connectors straight into their old original ECU connectors. Our old harnesses had a flying lead here, so we still have our markings. So you can still go on the website. If you have any problems with these connectors or something happens to them, you can still always hardwire or repair this connection here if needed because the instructions are still on the bottom of the um, harnesses product page. So these will plug straight into the original, in this case, OBD0 ECU connectors. The next thing I wanna mention are these loose wires. These loose wires are actually the extras that are located over here on the extra connection. So these two wires are not really dedicated to anything. What they'll actually do is they'll allow you to add a gauge or, a, or maybe a solenoid or something and uh, the user can basically figure that out on their own. It's just wires running through the harness. That's all it really is. What else I'd like to go over on this harness is the chassis integration. So in this case, this is the shock tower connections on the 88 to 91 SI, EX, and HF cars. If you didn't have one of those vehicles that I just mentioned, and let's say you have a standard, an STD, then what you'd do is you'd plug in our STD standard um, extension harness that will adapt this connector over to the driver's side shock tower connector. So the DX cars, those dual point fuel injection cars, those are, those are subcategorized as STD, standard. So that would need this little sub wire 
on top of our chassis adapter. Okay, so let's put the EF adapter aside. And let's talk about an EG adapter. This isn't actually just an EG adapter, this is also a DC adapter. EG is 92 to 95 Civic. Early model DC has OBD1 ECU plugs, and that's a 94 to 95 vehicle. So that's gonna be the year range of this adapter. You're gonna see it look very, very similar. It's gonna have a C101 connection. Like I said before, this one plugs straight into the engine harnesses. The next thing that we can look at is the ECU connections. So if you see here, these are standard 9295 OBD1 ECU plugs. And then we have a couple loose wires again for your extras, just like we talked about in the EF. Now, if your ECU connectors are damaged in any way, you can always revert back to the logos on the wires and do it, we call it the old school way, where you literally look at the wire colors and you'd splice them into your connectors. That can be done and you can find those instructions on the bottom of the product page. The next connectors I wanna talk about are your shock tower connector, connectors. These are going to be found on the driver's side of the 92 to 95 cars. You will also notice connectors on your passenger side of your vehicle. We don't use those. This is where you'd integrate everything that we need this harness to integrate. Now let's talk about the late model DC adapter. This harness is gonna be strikingly similar. You're gonna see the same C101 connection straight to your ECU. You're gonna see the same shock tower connections for the driver's side shock tower. The only difference here is it's gonna have a different integration for the ECU connectors. So if you were to switch from a later model Integra in this case to let's say an EG or an early model Integra, you'd have a couple options. You could discard this harness and buy a fresh one from us, or you could use these wires, you could go on your product page and you could hardwire them in. It's really up to you. Um, making life easier is what we were trying to do with adding these connectors, but it's totally your call on how you want to change chassis. All right, so the next one I would like to talk about are the EK chassis. This one is your early model EK. Same thing, you have your C101 plug, it plugs in. You have your chassis connector that's located on your driver's side shock tower. But the difference between the early model EK is that it actually doesn't have any ECU plugs in it. All the ECU plugs are located on the original engine harness. So with that being said, there's no need at all to integrate to any of the old ECU connectors. You literally just have the green plug located near the ECU to integrate to, and you're done. Let's look at the late model EK. So the late model EK is not created the same way, and it actually has ECU connectors. It just has one though. You'll notice that they're all isolated to this one connector. That's a really easy way to tell if you have an early or late model EK, is that you'll have one ECU plug dangling near your green plug if you have a late model vehicle. So that takes care of our off the shelf standard chassis. Another option is going to be our flying lead and our race fuse box options. These are getting a lot more popular with people stripping out their cars and trying to eliminate as much things as possible. Online, you'll be able to find an instruction for where all these 20 wires go. It might not be as complicated as 20 wires, but we do offer a, a various array of different things that you can hook up to your vehicle. So don't be too intimidated and have a look at our instructions before you say that this is too much to handle. The next thing that I wanna show you is going to be our race fuse box. This one is a really popular part for us. I'm gonna show you guys what we have going on here. We have our, our standard C101 that will integrate the exact same way as always straight into our engine harnesses. We'll also have a battery function on here where this lug will be wired straight to the battery positive. We have a switches lead. We have an auxiliary output lead for your fuel pumps, your fans, your lights, etc. And then we have a dash function that has all your 
gauge cluster functionality.